All right, how's it going everyone? I want to give a quick walkthrough on another side project I'm working on. Um, I've always wanted to kind of build a course and host it on my own platform where I'm using basically Stripe to accept payments. And this is what I'm trying to build out. It's basically going to be a really small course, maybe like three to four hours where I just kind of teach JavaScript, Node, and how to build command line interface tools. Um, so it's, it's not going to be like a fully fledged, like learn everything course. It's going to be very specific to like, can you just build some command line tools? And I think this is good to like understand as a beginner because I think we focus so much on the UI and the styling and stuff. But it's like, can you focus on like the back end stuff? Can you focus on like the, the CLI just to like read files, write files, fetch from an API, et cetera. Um, so I've been kind of trying to build my own little marketing landing page. I haven't really made it too far. I have like three sections. I need to add a footer. I need to add like a, a testimonial section and probably like a subscribe to a newsletter section. I've been, I've been practicing with like trying to get better at design. I've been just looking at reference pages and trying to emulate or, you know, extract some of the things they do and apply it to what I'm doing. So that's all I got in terms of the design, but let me actually show you what happens when you try to purchase. So I have this hooked up with Stripe. So when I click pay now, it's actually going to go to a Stripe page. And then I can type in my email. I can go ahead and put in my fake. When I click pay, this is actually going to go through Stripe. And then Stripe's going to redirect me to a page that basically displays the course. I plan to just host the video on YouTube and just unlist it. If I do decide to take this a step further, I might upload it to S3, put it behind a private bucket, set up some uh, authorization signed URLs so that only certain people who log in can view it. But that's the idea. Once, once you've paid through Stripe, Stripe will send you back to this page and the email is now in my database. So if I actually go to my database here, you can see I have an email account that has all of the information related to that payment. And it also sends out an email, like a confirmation email. Stripe does that on my behalf. So that's pretty cool as well. But now that you've registered and you have this, you can actually, you know, you can log out and then go to sign in over here. Actually, I can't do, I, I'm still working on that, but there used to be a, um, an input box here. I'm actually gonna make a separate page for sign in. But that's the overview of the app. I want to walk you through how does this work? How did I get this set up with Stripe? Because I think this is something interesting that it's pretty easy to do, but reading through the docs can be a little bit overwhelming. And then also kind of explain how this works locally, right? So first off, I have Stripe set up. And when you install Stripe on your command line, I think I had to like brew install it. You can run a Stripe listen, which is what's running in this terminal right here. And it's going to listen for any Stripe uh, web hooks and kind of forward them to your API. Because if you're in test mode, um, they don't have anything there that's like kind of like sending you the web hooks. You actually have to like run this thing to listen for your web hooks. So basically it just sets up a listener and then any web hooks that come in, I just forward them to my API slash Stripe uh, endpoint. I forgot to mention that I'm using the T3 stack here. So this is next and TRPC and Tailwind and stuff. Uh, but the database is actually DynamoDB as you saw earlier. Um, so what, what actually happens? So let's go to the page that has that pay button. Let's kind of understand what's going on. So I have a purchase now button. And when you click it, it calls a checkout function. Let's go ahead and check out that checkout function. And what this does is it creates a new checkout. So this is my TRPC mutation, create checkout. And then I call it because I need to get an ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the routers here. And I'm gonna assume you kind of already know TRPC but it's not important, like this could be REST as well. The important is the, uh, the content that's happening inside of here. Okay, so for create checkout, I'm using the Stripe object, which just comes in through Stripe. So like I import Stripe here, and then I set up a Stripe object using the Stripe constructor, and I pass it a secret key. So that's in my .env, I'm not gonna share it, but you just put that in your .env and you're good to go. Now let's go down to that method to kind of walk you through what's going on. So I do Stripe checkout sessions create. And what this does is it's going to create a session in Stripe and give you an ID that you need in the front end. And then also you can specify like what happens when this user successfully pays, like what endpoint do you want them to redirect to? And then also if they cancel the payment, where do you want to take them? I'll just take them back to the homepage. You can also specify like the payment type. I think there's payment and there's like subscription. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's subscription, there's payment. I'm just doing a one-time payment thing. 
I'm not doing like a monthly subscription, so I don't need a subscription. And then you put the items that they're trying to buy. So price ID, that's actually something that I went to the Stripe UI and you have to go and create a product. So let me show that. I went here to products inside of Stripe and I went and I created one. So if you click on it, you do get an ID over here. You see this is price one MZ. Um, I put that in my .env and that's what's put here. So it kind of lets Stripe know like, hey, they're trying to buy this item and then they want to buy one of it. And then Stripe will figure out how much that costs and the display it in the checkout page and it looks nice. So when we do this and then we return it to the front end. Okay, so after the payment goes through and you get redirected to the success page, this is the page that I have for the success and it basically just shows like a validating uh, payment message. And when the payment is validated, I redirect them to a course page and I send them with their email. I'm not gonna talk about this page yet because there's something really important about Stripe that I have to talk about. So when you successfully pay, Stripe redirects the user to a page, but also behind the scenes, they have servers that are gonna send you something called a webhook. So let's look at our API here. So after you successfully pay in the Stripe checkout page and you got redirected to your own success page, there's another API endpoint I had to create called, so it's inside of source pages, uh, stripe.ts. And this is an endpoint that Stripe is going to send a event to that you have to listen for so that you know to add that user who just paid into your database. So in this case, I'm basically just listening for the request. I have to use this like weird buffer thing. I don't know why I had to do this. There's like this micro library I had to use to take the request, convert it to a buffer. And then you have to get like a signature that they send you from Stripe. And then you use the Stripe API to get the webhook, construct the event. Um, this is on their docs, by the way. Like if you just go to their docs, they give you like a majority of this code. The only custom logic is like this part down here. Um, if you can't do the event because of a bad signature or something, you throw an error. Um, otherwise, you do a switch statement on the event.type. And then if the payment intent succeeded type happens, which is basically like, hey, everything worked fine. Their credit card's good. They paid. You have the money. It's in your account. What I'm doing is I'm basically grabbing some of the information from the object and I'm storing that in my DynamoDB table. So I'm just storing the entire object, like literally just shove everything in the Dynamo table just in case I need it in the future. I don't really know if I need all the information. Probably not. I just probably need uh, maybe their ID in case they want a refund or they complain that they can't log in. I need to verify their Stripe ID against like their email or something. I don't know. But I just store everything in Dynamo and then I return receive true so that Stripe knows that I successfully processed this. Otherwise, you just throw some errors and stuff like that. So that's like the web hook portion of this setup. Again, you have in the front end, you redirect them to a Stripe checkout page. They enter, they enter the information in the checkout page, and then they get redirected to a success page on your app. At the same time, Stripe sends out a event to your web hook endpoint. Your web hook endpoint is going to process that event and do something with it. In most cases, you just need to store the information in your database to flip a flag or just your system needs to know that a particular email or ID has paid or has, has paid via Stripe so that you can give them access. Um, subscriptions are probably a little bit more complex because there's like different event types for like canceling subscriptions and stuff like that. So you'll have to go and like read the docs and maybe you guys can teach me how to do that. Um, but I figured, hey, I want to start simple. I want to do the easiest thing possible, which is a single purchase. So once you've stored that in your database, again, let's go back to the success page because I don't think I really talked about this. When this page loads, I get the session ID from the query string. Remember, if I go to here, I'm redirecting the user on success to a slash success query string session ID, and I get that checkout session ID. Okay. So I get that session ID, and then I grab the Stripe session from my own API. So this is a TRPC use, use query. I pass in the session ID, and then when I get it back, so I'm listening here for it to change, and when I actually get it defined, I'm grabbing the email that's from the session, and I'm redirecting them to a course question mark email page. Okay, uh, so let me show you the endpoint I have for basically checking or getting the session. So there's a get Stripe session query here which is just an endpoint I'm using so I can get their email. Cause again, I don't have any em email inputs in my UI. I wanted to keep this as simple and low action as possible and let Stripe do it for me. And then just get that information back from Stripe. So you pass in your session ID and it gives you back a session. 
and I'm just grabbing the email and just returning that in an object. Okay, on this session.customer details, there's like a lot of information that you can use about the customer. I just want their email, I send that back. And then the front end uses that to redirect the user to a course page, which if I were to just go to this page, just go to course, type an email, this is going to show the URL to my video. Okay, and there's a little bit more that goes on on this page. So if I go to the course page, I need to verify that the email is actually like valid, right? So when this page loads, I get the email from the query string and then I hit my own API and I say is paid email and I pass the email as an argument. So what this function does is it just checks the database to see like, hey, is this email actually exist in my database? Because if it does, it means that the Stripe webhook fired and successfully added that email. So I just get the email from the database and if it exists, I return true or is valid or if it doesn't, I return false. Simple as that. And then I will basically show a link to um, an embedded YouTube video if they have paid. Now this isn't the most secure thing. I am probably thinking about having this be an environment variable so that anyone who checks out my code can't see where the URL is to my embedded YouTube video. And you might say like, why am I using just an unlisted YouTube video? Like anyone can share that. Um, they could, honestly, I don't really care. It's like a $1 course and anyone can share their username and password anyway, anyway right? Um, I could have this hosted in S3 and like make it all secure so that in only people who have, you know, the proper email can access it. But honestly, like unless you know these digits, there's no way you're going to find my unlisted YouTube video, I don't think. So I think this is also kind of just as secure. Honestly, I don't really care. I just want to keep this as simple as possible. Um, just for like, you know, hit the ground running and get this deployed out. And I think this is a quicker, quicker solution than bringing an S3 or some type of like secured file location. Um, so that is the walkthrough of what I've been kind of working on. Um, I do plan to clean up this page a little bit more. And I don't know if I want to have just one really long video for this mini course or if I want to have like multiple um, unlisted videos and have like four or five of them, depending on like how many things we're building out. Still thinking about that. I might also need to add course material. Like what if there's a zip that people need to download so they can hit the ground running? I don't really know yet. Um, if I do have a bunch of extra files that people need to download, then I might bring in S3 and that'll make it a lot easier to like store um, and host files for people to use. Um, and then I do need to work on the sign in page where basically I'm going to click on this, go to a different page that has a form, you enter in your email, it just redirects you here if it's valid and then you'll see your stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was a cool overview. If you ever want to see this code, let's go and show you where that's located. Uh, let's go to repositories. I'm calling it DigiDrop, but I might rename this to just like be more specific. Um, but here's the code. I'm still working on a lot of the stuff, like how do you get it running locally? Uh, I'm trying to document it a little bit better and try to automate more of these steps because there is quite a lot of manual setup you have to do with Stripe and Amplify if you wanted to get this hosted somewhere and setting up your domain. But overall, I mean, you just download it. You should be able to do like a, a Docker Compose up and it should just run. But feel free to kind of dive through this code if you just want to kind of inspect like how does Stripe work? How did I get this all working with Stripe and the webhook stuff? Other than that, I hope this was uh, enjoyable to watch. Have a good day and happy coding.